As stated by Johnson, physical activity is important for health maintenance in all people. Studies indicate that people with disabilities are less likely to engage in physical activity, they're more sedentary, and they're less likely to be physically fit than their peers. People who are inactive have higher risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, and other health issues such as osteoporosis. Of these health problems can be because of lack of information and one not knowing how to exercise or what to exercise improperly. Lack of access, they may not be close to a gym or a park that is outdoors and is safe. Lack of support in the community, um, a lot of programs don't even include elderly people, people with disabilities, there may not even be programs available, and the nature of the disability depending on how severe it is for this person. The definitions of the degrees of one's disability is usually expressed in terms of intellectual functioning or IQ, behavioral competence, and the need for special service. Many with disabilities have difficulties with speech, attention, perception, and cognitive skills. Also, social adjustment problems which can cause aggressiveness and low self-esteem and emotional imbalance. The mentor is trying to get the mentee to push the ball every couple of inches in the water to get the sensation of swimming so the mentee is using both arms and legs in the pool. In the article, Enhancing Cognitive and Learning Skills of Children Through Physical Activity, talks about using Skinner's behaviorist operant conditioning model. This model encourages behavior through positive or negative reinforcement. Rewards are given after an achievement and punishers are given to decrease the likelihood of a certain behavior that you don't want repeated. External factors play a mere role in child psychology and the learning process. It's usually mostly internal factors such as thinking, emotions, and previous experience playing a major role in the behavior. In this video, you see the child wants to splash in the water and drink and cover his eyes. And the mentor tries to adapt and find ways to work around this type of behavior. And then eventually you see that he performs this task successfully and she gives him the time to splash with reward. Just because someone has a disability does not mean that he or she is not a human with thoughts and feelings. Let me just for this. Keep me healthy. See my friends. Fun. As stated by Johnson, the most important part of exercise for those with disabilities is to make sure that it's fun. As the mentee stated here, she says that she likes to exercise because she gets to see her friends and it's fun. There are shown positive effects including gross motor function in the home and community, um, especially group fitness programs. Those help children become more motivated by their peers and they derive from social benefits with improvements in the functional skills and muscle strength. Not only do those with disabilities benefit physically, but also emotionally and psychologically. My favorite exercise is rock, medicine, ball, battle. <laughs> When allowing someone with choices to do what he or she likes to do in physical activity, there are shown high levels of participation and satisfaction. 
As stated by Johnson, parents are more likely to provide their children with the opportunity of physical activity if specific potential benefits for their children are proven. The mentee shown here needs help at first with assistance on the BOSU ball to do step ups. It takes her a little bit to gain that confidence within herself, but shortly she starts to perform this on her own. Stated in the article about adolescents with autism in physical activity, the goal is to decrease rates of stereotypes and repetitive behaviors to improve cognitive performance, self-regulation, and attention and compliance. As you see here, self-regulation becomes known by the mentee, and she starts to learn how to do things on her own. sport is football, basketball, soccer. Exercise doesn't always need to be working out in a gym. Different people will enjoy different activities. What is traditionally seen as exercise may not be right for each and every person. A good idea is to incorporate more activity into everyday life. It can be gardening, cleaning, getting out and about on the weekends, or just enjoying a nice walk. While incorporating favorite activities, it will help increase participation. As shown here, the mentee is doing some of her favorite activities and it's keeping her enjoyment up. Last minute tips for providing physical activity for those with a disability. Social support from family and friends needs to be consistent and positive. Not only does physical activity reduce risk of coronary heart disease, high blood pressure, cancers, and diabetes. It helps with gross motor function, speech problems, cognitive issues, and social issues. Communities can ensure that someone with a disability is involved at all stages. Implement K-12 through accessible physical education classes for children. Encourage healthcare providers to talk with their patients with disabilities about incorporating physical activity.